Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. Today I have footage from about three to four months ago of me playing two beautiful, nearly perfect, one of them was perfect, games in which I played two of my favourite gambits in either game. So, I'm going to show you that footage, then I'm going to come back to Will with the short hair because this is footage from when I had an outrageously long mullet and I will see you in 5 minutes and 33 seconds time to analyse those games and hopefully learn from them. Enjoy. Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. Today we are playing e4. My opponent goes for e5, we will play knight to f3 here, and if knight c6, we will go d4, uh, prompting them to take. We will take inwards with the knight. This is the scotch. For any of you who aren't familiar, we play bishop to e3 here, stabilizing the knight. And if bishop c5, which is in fact the main line um, of the scotch, it kind of transposes because generally the four queen f6, bishop c5 is played, then bishop e3. We do see it, we can play the Blumenfeld attack with knight to b5 here. This is one of, if not my favorite openings in chess. Um, the only move here, the only playable move for black is to take this bishop and then we take back here. This looks weird, but after the queen retreats, there is a line where it can go check and there's crazy things where you intentionally give up this rook such that you can fork and take this one. Weird lines, but after the queen goes back here, we want to play queen to g4, going straight after the g7 square with potential ideas of winning the rook. And the best move here is actually king to f8, which is kind of ridiculous. Almost everyone plays uh, pawn to g6, in which case you want to slide across with the queen and threaten a fork here on the c7 square. Now, this is all preparation that I have. Uh, d6 is almost certainly going to be the move we see here. It's the move that almost everyone plays and also the best move because, I mean, you need to stop me from being able to take on c7 with the knight. Um, but... Then, then, ladies and gentlemen, we can threaten checkmate, like just randomly move. Then we're threatening checkmate with the bishop. Now, knight to e5 again. My opponent's following all the prep that I have here. You're thinking, okay, we, we can't just hang our bishop. Yes, we can hang our bishop. We can castle kingside because if they take our bishop, we go checkmate on f7. Oh, guys, guys, it's a perfect game. It's a perfect game. We don't even need to analyze because that was all perfect. Let's just go straight into another one. New opponent. Oh my gosh, right, now we've got the black pieces. Oof, oof, beautiful stuff. Uh, we will play Alakine's defense against e4 here. Our opponent maybe steps forward, we go knight d5, and then we will play, you know what, we're gonna play b5, we'll play an O'Sullivan Gambit. I don't wanna play normal theory right now. Coming off the back of that beautiful win. They take, we go c5, and the idea is that we draw the bishop out, play c5, and threaten this move, queen to a5 check. They take here, Guys, guys, check. We hit the bishop, we hit the king. Now, if you block with the knight, we simply take. If you block with the bishop, we take your bishop. They, there is a line where if they block with the queen, by the way, we take the bishop, they take our knight, we play bishop b7, hitting the queen and hitting g2. Uh, our queen supports the bishop here. This is all theory that I'm very familiar with. Um, here, I believe we're just going to take the knight. Makes a lot of sense. We've given up two pawns for a bishop. I can also take this pawn here which seems to make sense. I could go e6 as well. I could also go bishop b7. e6, maybe they play b4. Let's just take the pawn here. We'll claim all our material, and then I think we will then go bishop b7, um, e6, move the bishop, and castle kingside. Should have uh, a completely winning position there. Our opponent could go bishop d4, but I don't really see the point. We just move the queen. Um, so they bring their queen into f. Huh. I'm kind of thinking we just do this. I'm just going to step back. Off the dark squares, this bishop is now not going to attack us. We could have gone knight to c6. Maybe the engine would prefer that. But, okay, now now we're just going to trade. Because, yes, my opponent's got a big lead in development. But I, I do not care. Because we we are a bishop for a pawn. Um, I can go knight c6. I could probably go for you know a5 a4 that kind of idea to activate this rook maybe even bring the rook to the open b file uh, it could be useful but yeah we are we are not really in much danger here now that the bishop is open uh, we can get the knight developed and it's going to be it's going to be another relatively sharp win this is why you have like a or why i would recommend you have you know a really dynamic and exciting repertoire okay the idea is that Knight to b5, and then maybe knight to d6, or knight to c7 is a threat. So I honestly think I maybe will just go bishop a6. Not allow the knight to come to b5. 
And I mean, this knight is just, we're clamping down on where this knight can go here. Uh, it cannot jump forward into the position. If you go like a4 and try and put the knight there, again, our mission now is just trade off into the winning endgame. We have a full extra piece um, for the price of one pawn. And it should not be very hard to then convert that to a win. We'll play bishop here to c5, um, ready to trade this off and play knight c6. I don't really want to play knight c6 and allow you to take and take because then I have a very, very weak isolated pawn on c6. So honestly, I am just going to take. It does seem kind of weird we get rid of our bishop pair, but we're allowed to play knight c6 with tempo on the bishop. The bishop steps back. And I mean, like, what else? What else should we do? Go here. Seems to make sense. Win a pawn, unless you're willing to play rook here, but then I go here and win this rook because it's trapped in the corner. Oh, and that is resignation in three, two, one. There we go. Resignation. Okay, so here we are in the study. Now, we're going to go through game one, which was the perfect game. Now, if we go and scroll down, uh, looking at the graph-based analysis here, you'll see it was basically even. One inaccuracy, and it does give white, or rather me, a 90% accuracy. However, our inaccuracy was actually a book move. So we don't count that as an inaccuracy. This was an intentional. Uh, it was when we played the Blumenfeld with Knight to b5. Let's just go through the game. So if we open up the Masters database here, we can see we open with e4, e5, Knight f3, and Knight c6. In this position, uh, obviously, all the Masters are just playing the Spanish, the Roy Lopez. Uh, two thirds of the time, in fact. Bishop c4, the Italian as well. But the third most popular, the Scotch, my personal favorite. Now, uh, almost every single time, I mean, there's only been about 100 times where any other moves been played by a master. You see takes, knight takes, bishop c5. As you see, uh, one of the top moves, bishop c5, is actually known as the classical variation, as you can see here. Uh, if the knight had come out, I think that's the Schmidt variation. Uh, let's just check that I'm not completely waffling. There we go. But the bishop comes out. Here we see that the, uh, the top move, again, is bishop to e3. And then by far, in classical variation, all the masters are playing queen to f6. Now, the reason that I've opened the masters database is to highlight the fact that 95% of masters here will go for c3, which is the main line c3, and then knight g7, uh, and after like bishop c4, generally you can see, I don't know, castle, castles, that's pretty standard. Um, and you get a position like this, where the knight is nice and outposted in the center, and if ever you see takes, then the pawn can take, uh, and this is uh, then a very strong center, so... Generally speaking, black doesn't go for that, but that's the merit of c3. Instead of playing the most popular master move in the top engine move, c3 here, we instead go for the one played 5% of the time, which has admittedly a higher loss rate by far for black. However, if we go into the normal Lee Chess database, you can see that this has a very high, the highest in fact, win rate for white. That is because if white knows what they're doing, they are going to have a very beautiful game. So, knight to b5. I will see how the masters played this. This is not an inaccuracy, this is theory. The engine treats it as an inaccuracy. This engine treats the Karo Khan as an inaccuracy. And while I do agree with it, in that case, obviously it's just theory. Then the only move here is to trade the bishops. Uh, else, if you go back here, then I can just trade the bishops and fork you here. This is kind of the point of 9v5, uh, is to put the pressure on c7 here. So instead, we see the trade of bishops, and then the queen goes back. Now, this has been played um, 17 times in the masters database. Queen to h4. Is actually the best move and there's some really convoluted line with g3 i think i went through this in the game uh the queen goes back queen g4 here all the masters are playing it this is the blumenfeld attack by the way i don't know if i mentioned g6 and this is awesome because 11 out of 17 masters have played g6 g6 is an inaccurate move the point being that king f8 is the best move now you do see masters playing it and in those games masters either win or draw however when you see g6 Queen to f4, d6, bishop c4, all of this is preparation. Uh, all of this is still following master games, but you see white wins all of these because of knight e5. King side castles in all the games, and I've seen these games uh, and knew that our opponent obviously made the mistake of then taking the bishop, uh, allowing us to deliver a beautiful, a beautiful little checkmate, a very simple looking checkmate, but just a very excellent 12 move prep based, almost opening trap. Uh, that leads to checkmate. If they hadn't have taken, um, then moves like queen to e7, I think, are playable. Although I think queen d7 is better, yeah. So queen d7 is better because there is a line with queen e7, then knight c3. Uh, and if they take, then you can bring the other knight in here. Then c7 is a problem, the queen's a problem, whereas that's not a problem on d7. This is a very interesting line. I made a full video uh, tutorial on this where I went through this exact line and this exact prep. Uh, I will probably link that 
in the description. However, let's have a look at game two. Okay, so here we are in the game two analysis. Our opponent opened with e4, went knight f6. This is Alakain or Aliakin's defense. Uh, you see here, Masters database, not a very popular response at all. Uh, only 20,000 games out of 1.1 million. Uh, so only about 2%. But knight to f6, e5, knight e5, most common move. Here, and then b5. Now, I open the Masters database to make the point that no Masters play this. It is a very dubious gambit, and it is, technically speaking, a mistake. That is because there are ways for whites to just be much better, i.e. accepting the pawn, and after c5, playing c4. And even though there's a cool line where we take, after queen takes, knight here, if you just go back with the queen, uh, we're just a pawn down, and this knight is looking stupid here, and we just have no development and a dead position. However, the reason to play it is, as we saw, bishop takes c5. And if they take here, that is a blunder because then queen a5 and we hit the king, of course, with the check and we hit the bishop as we saw in the game. If you block with the knight here, then we take the knight. And if we look in the Lee chess database, not just the master's database, sorry, uh, you'll see that in this position here, uh, bishop c4 is a common move, taking it, 23% of people uh, take this pawn, 23%, which is absolutely ridiculous. Knight f3 as well, another 6%. Loads of people are falling for this. Uh, and if we look at the average rating here of people taking this, okay, it's like 1700 on Lee Chess, so obviously there's a few weaker players falling for this. However, you can still do a lot, uh, even if they play it correctly, there's still some interesting lines. They take, we go here, they block with the bishop, uh, which is a mistake. I think they're supposed to block with the knight. And after we take, they can fork here. I think this is the uh, the best continuation, right? Is it block with the knight? Yeah, it is. How have they block with the bishop? We take the bishop. Knight here, and it's just a simple matter to trade and win another pawn. Uh, the queen comes here, queen steps back, best move, um, because, I mean, so far this is theory and then best moves, so this is perfect so far. After the castle, take to take, best. Uh, e6, not quite the best move, but I mean, it's just, it's just another good move. Bishop a6, uh, I then attack the knight, and this game was just pretty simple, because we take, take, develop our knight, bishop drops back, and a really nice little, uh, little call out to go bishop here, best move and bait our opponent into trying to hold on to their pawn, which will then leave their rook trapped uh, in the corner of the board here. There is no move to save this rook. Uh, actually, there is. They could give me this rook, and after I take, go here. Uh, but I mean, you know, best case scenario, if we look at the best possible continuation, rook to e1, uh, I can just take. Yeah, I can just take here, and after they take back, I mean, we're just up four points of material. Uh, we basically have an extra rook for a pawn, and we can break this open, activate the rook like this. Really easy to win game from here. So our opponent resigned after we trapped the rook. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that old footage. I wasn't able to sit down and record, uh, you know, a proper game today. I tried a few times, but I was just not playing good chess. I was not being even slightly entertaining. So I thought I'd dig up uh, some old footage that I didn't get around to posting of two really just beautiful quick wins. Um, and, you know, remind everyone of how my hair used to look. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. All that stuff really helps out the channel. And I will see you tomorrow in the next video. Bye.